So hello, everybody. You're very welcome along to the Southeast Technological University uh, Southeast Learning Festival. This is a joint initiative between Waterford IT and Carlo IT. And what we've got for you today is a panel discussion with elite sports people, a combination of uh, graduates or students from Carlo IT and Waterford IT, um, present and past students here. And the panel discussion today broadly centers around the, the role of elite sport performance and third level education. And the exact title is the role that third level sport plays or has played in your development as an elite sports person and how sport has helped or does help you with your study and career to date. So that's a, a bit of a mouthful, but essentially it boils down to uh, elite sport and third level education and how you make the two of those work. Uh, my name is Damien Lawler. I'm a sports uh, broadcaster and journalist with RTE. I'm a former student of IT Carlo as well. I, I get four years down there. Uh, but, but I spent most of my time playing hurling or trying to fundraise for the hurling club. So I think I got that balance, uh, maybe not as not as good as you guys. Uh, so I'm joined today and delighted to be joined by uh, four representatives from IT, Carlo. Uh, they are Grace Clifford, the Kildare uh, Ladies Football uh, star and captain. Brian Hurley, the well-known Cork footballer and former IT Carlo student. Uh, Brian is joint captain of Cork this year. Uh, Dr. Paula Fitzpatrick is a... Is a I suppose a household name to everybody in Irish sport for all our work with, with Irish rugby. And there's very little that, that Paula has some won in that regard from reaching World Cup semi-finals to, to Six Nations, um, uh, to being part of Barbarians set up on a number of occasions as well. And uh, Paula is a part of the uh, IT Carlo Science Department as well. Uh, delighted to have her. And Marcus Lawler, another household name, Marcus an Olympian, one of the, our top sprinters, and we're delighted to have you guys with us as well. Uh, so the four of you are joined by your colleagues and your peers in Waterford IT. Uh, Katie Nolan is the uh, Kikenny Kamogi star. And Katie, just to go any further, uh, wish you the very best luck this weekend and hope you nail an all-star for yourself. I think, Thanks uh, very much. Yeah. I think those Thank awards you. are on this weekend. So the very best luck to you. We'll all be cheering for you. Uh, you. Phil Healy, Phil, just to congratulate you on all your success uh, over the years and in recent times and to, to wish you every success going forward as well and you know like Marcus a, a top Olympian and a top sprinter so the very best to look to you and delighted to have you with us. Um, Colin Bonner as a, as a fellow tip man I'm just thrilled to have you on the, the call with me as well Colin. Um, you know I suppose looking back over your your CV both in the sporting sense and an acad academic sense Colin it's second to none. Uh, Colin played in 10 all Ireland finals throughout the grades but um, apart from leading the college to several Fitzgibbon Cups and Ashbourne Cups and Purcell Cups, uh, Colm's record of study is quite impressive. He, he, a degree in education, degree in sports management, a sports psychology, gone back to Satanta College a few years ago to, to further educate himself as well. So I look forward to talking to you about all that, Colm, and best luck with Tip this year as well. And then finally, Daryl, Daryl Walsh, um, a Cove Rambler star and a, a glittering underage Irish career. Uh, Daryl, I know you're up to around 50 appearances for the Ramblers at, at this point in time, um, and you've you've done very, very well, and I'm sure you'll go further as well. So we wish you all the very best luck. So just to the eight of you, thanks so much for joining us and the very best luck with your careers. Uh, it's been fascinating to follow all of you, and uh, I hope things are going well currently. Um, Grace, you're first on my list, so I might come to you. Um, it's been a busy time for you with, with Eadstown, with Kildare, um, I, I guess with all the various strands of your life, um, but you also had a crucial injury in there as well, Grace, in, in the middle of all that. And when, when you were in college in IT Carlo, how, how did you manage to, to balance everything and how did you manage to make it work for yourself? Um, it certainly was very difficult. Um, I suppose, I think playing sport from a young age and balancing it from a young age, you kind of just get really used to living a busy lifestyle you know, when you're playing with a number of teams and, you know, between school and, and leaving certain and all of that, it's, it's always a challenge. So I think going into college and, uh, you know, really looking forward to going to IT Carl. I remember it really well and um, I was really excited to get on board. And I just think in fairness to, to IT Carlo, they really helped facilitate us as well as, yeah. as us learning to balance things. It was, that was the huge thing. Um, sport was really promoted in the college. It was, um, possibly the first time that I really felt like the quality side of things. We talk about the 2020, you know, can't see, can't be initiative and all of those things. In fairness, in, in IT Carlo, you were treated the exact same, you know, um, as, as our male um, counterparts, you know, so it was amazing in that sense. 
um, and they just really facilitated all of that. Um, and in relation, I suppose, to my cruciate injury, it came at a time when I was in college. Um, mm. So it was it was uh, a difficult time, obviously, because it was the year Kildare were doing really, really well. Um, it was the back. It was the year previous we had lost the All Ireland, so it was it was really hard news to take. And um, I have to say, I just I have two friends who've actually recently done their ACL, and I just can't. I just it's really brought home to me how good IT Carlo was to me at that time, um, because they just were great support. I had great people there helping me in my prehab. And even though I was near graduating, um, you know, when I wasn't going to be playing the next year, they were still such huge support to me. And to be honest, I really owe that to them because. I don't think I would be where I am now in my football career if it wasn't for that time, you know. I know, I get you, Grace. And it's, it's great to hear that they were such a, you mentioned one word, like the college facilitated nearly your your, yeah. your career as well, which is an important one. I'll circle that and we'll come back to that. Um, Katie, just Katie Nolan, you know, when your studies in WIT in, in the health promotion areas, um, which, which are county career with Kenny and your club career with St. Martins and just tracking your career Katie like you went from from minor to intermediate to senior it was a, a kind of a gradual but steady progression for you up along the ranks as well was college the same thing for you in that if you found maybe you could do a chunk of work at a time you could get through that and move on to the next stage as well because uh, as Grace was saying there with the attention being shown on, on female sports and women's sports especially through academic sides I'd say you had a pretty intense workload. Yeah, um, so I was also in IT Carlo for four years as well. Um, so I'm currently in currently in WIT and I have another year to go as well. Um, but yeah, sa- same thing um, in IT Carlo. Um, so just stuff like in my course, we would have used the gym. Um, and just for female sports athletes, that was kind of all new at the time. So in some ways, when I go back to my Camogie teams now, um, some girls like didn't study sport in college, so they they wouldn't know how to do stuff in the gym. Whereas um, I kind of have a small bit of an advantage that way. But only I done the sports course, I'd be in the same boat as all of those. Um, and then WIT at the moment is the same thing. Um, so any help that you need, S and C wise or nutrition wise, um, it's there. And yeah, no, it's very good. Um, the workload, yeah, I suppose that comes through. Uh, organizing yourself um, which has I suppose yeah since underage like the whole way up through school secondary school and then into college um, like you're organizing your classes for the week what assignments did you win when you have training so it's just it's a great life skill to bring forward so it is um, mm. so I think playing sport in college definitely teaches you that where's next Katie where's the next four years then DCU or Letterkenny IT or somewhere oh I'm, I, I won't travel any further now I stay in Leinster you're, and WIT in Carlo, I'd say anyway. And then best look with your ongoing studies. I know you're 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 working with uh, with TJ there as well, part time too. Um yeah. Brian, Brian Hurley, when, when I was in IT Carlo, it was rare you'd see a Corkman knocking around the place. Uh, I think there was two and the whole college knew who they were because just of the geographical distance. But I guess Brian, it's not something you're unused to because even for you to go from home into into Cork City for training is a trek, but uh, it's an almighty trek from Carlo IT down to down to, to, to Cork for, for your own training. Um, you you were in college for quite a while. Uh, you know, how did you manage it? How did you manage that journey? Yeah, it was a bit of a trek, to be honest with you, David. Um, probably about four and a half hours from home, to be honest. Uh, used to go home, you know, every weekend, kind of. But during the week, there was a... Obviously, I was involved with the Cork 21s and stuff at the time, so there was a nice few trips midweek as well, so... A lot of time on the road, which I kind of found challenging, to be honest with you, and the body more than anything, like, you know, um, I suppose the last, the last, uh, you know, over the last 10 years, I suppose, training's gone to a new level in the GA, really, and, um, you know, sitting in the car for maybe two and a half hours down to Cork wasn't ideal, but um, that was probably the most challenging part of it, the training and stuff was okay, but... Um, yeah, probably took a bit of toll on me, but in fairness, I suppose the college were very good to me then. You know, they gave me access to, to Mick Dempsey and, you know, they got me in with a few clubs there and stuff like that to take a bit of pressure off the body, which is which is ideal at the time, really. Like, you know, and I suppose the facilities up there, you know, the car kind of trusted what, you know, they did the best of gym, the best of equipment. So that, it, like, you know, when, when they trusted us to do the work up there and, no, someone was watching over me. It made life a bit easier. 
brilliant, Brian. And we'll be back to you very, very soon. Um, just as, as regards yourself, Phil, and uh, your, your own career in WIT, um, like one of the, we were talking to Brian about travel, Phil, but you, you'd have had international travel as well, which is an, an entirely different ball game. And it's, a, it's an individual sport that you're in, but, but also trying to get your academic thing through as well. When you look back on your, your time in college, what are the, the overriding emotions for you? Yeah, I suppose it, it is hard to balance both and uh, like Cork and Waterford are very close together. But it, for me, it was two and a half hours door to door. And like you have to take the sacrifices um, here and there. And I didn't come home um, often when I was in college because I am training um, five, six days a week. So you uh, you do have to make the sacrifices. But look, I was in a in a great position um, in WIT, moved from UCC to do my master's in WIT. And it was where my training group and everything were based. So like it was the ideal move for me at the time. And five years later, I am still hanging on um, in WIT. <laughs> but I have my master's completed. And for me, like the education side of things is just as important as the sporting side of things because sport isn't going to last forever. Yeah. So... I wanted to have my fallback if whenever I chose to, to go into um, work full time. And I suppose as an individual sport, it is really hard to work full time or even part time because of the hours that goes into the sport. So um, I have kept on a module um, every semester. So um, just to keep upskilling and different things like that. And, and the support that I've gotten from WIT um, when I joined at the end of 2017 really has been second to none and although we are an individual sport they make like you give I've been given everything that I have ever needed and like the facilities are second to none and I have to give credit to WIT for the reason that I got to the Olympic Games I've got to an international every single year and they really take that worry away from any athlete no matter what the sport is and uh, really have brought me to that next level. Phil you made the point too, I remember reading an article you did some time ago, you made the point that it kept you disciplined, the fact that you could switch from academic to education uh, to sport uh, and you had room in your diary for all, did you compartmentalise Phil, was that really what it was or did you just, that work ethic was brought into all aspects of your life? A hundred percent and like I could have the choice if I wanted to be full-time in athletics and not do anything with the with the study but um you like that I suppose that's not healthy in a way either or personally that I felt it that I I wanted that distraction and the the education side of things was the perfect distraction for me and it did keep me disciplined because I knew I had college at a certain time I knew I had a assignments due and that didn't stop me leaving things to last minute but um yeah it's for me it definitely helped an awful lot um and it was that distraction away from sport because you do dedicate so much time to the sport it is great to have that um that thing on the side and uh even for a social aspect going into college and different things like that it um mm. it certainly made it um a lot easier to balance both um speaking of of balance and paula I, i'll come to you next if that's all right um i look back on your cv paula and i mean you went through a, a rigorous academic uh, schedule like with, with PhDs and and you know you, you're you're a doctor an acad academic doctor but Arctic marathons as well uh, Paula afterwards and the the international rugby career and to hit the heights that you did and to break the ground that you did um, you 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 appear to be in certain uh, you appear to be in bubbles a long time but not just one bubble either Paula there's definitely two or three bubbles sticking out of me how did you make it all work during your time at third level. Um, well, I'd say I just didn't want to leave college. That's why I stayed there so long. Um, and the Arctic Marathon was a very slow Arctic Marathon. So <laughs> well, it, it sounds a lot. It sounds a lot more impressive than it is. But yeah, it does um, sound impressive to be fair, though, you know. Yeah, I suppose it's similar to what Phil is saying there about like that kind of uh, drive to keep learning things, you know, to keep improving yourself and to keep um, to keep active and stuff. I suppose I always loved training. So even though rugby was finished, I was always looking for, for something else, maybe to some other kind of a challenge um, to, to go after. So the things like the, the Arctic marathon and adventure racing and triathlon and things like that, have, again, very badly, but uh, 
very enjoyable to to kind of participate in them and and keep active and and um you know like the social elements as well like Phil is talking about there um so yeah but I've been very lucky and privileged to have the opportunity for the education that I've had and um and yeah like IT Carla were brilliant for me in terms of my rugby career and facilitating that as well so yeah did you find like Phil Paula that one helped the other yeah, definitely. I think it's there's very much transferable skills between, you know, the, you need a certain amount of discipline and drive and desire and passion to to follow any challenge, whether that's academic or whether it's sporting. So, yeah, definitely. Now, obviously, as the guys have already said, balancing that is difficult at times and it does take a lot of time management um, skills. But And you do get that wrong from time to time, but it is about prioritising at different stages, you know, where you need to devote your time most um, so yeah, definitely transferable skills across the two. Okay, um, Colum, Phil, uh, Paula mentioned there the fact that you know keep improving yourself, and you've been in WIT a long time, Colum, and you know you would have coached nearly all my crop of friends to Fitzgibbon Cup titles uh, over the years, the likes of Mikey Beavins and Mark O'Leary and, and all, and Kevin O'Brien and all those guys. But um, keep improving yourself, Colum. You you went back several times then and added to your academic kind of collection. Um, and they're probably in roles that you use to this day, Colin. Would that be fair to say, like the psychology, the S and C, and then in your own job in WIT's, uh, you, you know, student life department as well? It's, it's continuous what you're actually doing and what you're learning. Um, you, you can never say you know enough in anything to, um, because you always find someone else that will prove you wrong or something. But yeah, education is hugely important. And um, if you can play sport at a high level, I think the way the colleges are aligned at the moment that, you know, it makes that transition easier for students. Um, uh, you know, I suppose when I did when I did my um, master's there, I'd, I'd done a thesis on the impact of Fitzgibbon Hurlan on student life and academic engagement. and. A lot of people have the impression that, you know, sport takes too much from a person and they won't get through college. But that particular group of players that we uh, that we interviewed, um, 34 out of 35 completed their, their degree or or near completion of the degree. So, you know, they, they had a huge that had a huge impact on them in terms of their affinity with WIT and be part of WIT history. You know, and I can see students when they get involved in sport, it just enriches them, enhances their college experience so much more because you know, um, I know students have a comment, they would just use WIT as, as, as the building as such to get their degree and might not have much interaction, but, you know, um, the students that put themselves forward and represent the, the college and represent their county or represent the province, you know, you really have to admire what they do because uh, the easiest thing to do when you come to college is put your head down and just concentrate in your own little area. But yeah, look, it, it, um, as I said, it's been hugely encouraging to see the number of different sports people that have come through, I suppose, WIT in my experience. And, um, you know, just to see them when they finished up with a degree, how much they're, uh, a more rounded person they were. Colin, just very briefly, would you think that since you started off in the college as a student yourself to, to the current point, that the relationship between sports and third level is just blown through the roof completely? Yeah, sure. Other governing bodies realise, you know, um, athletes at uh, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, they're coming into their prime. And if you can develop the proper pathways for these athletes, you know, it, it's going to be a huge benefit, uh, not only to, the, to that sport, but also, you know, the colleges have realised as well that high profile athletes uh, that come into the college um, can, can, you know, keep that college to the forefront in people's minds. I know... When I did the, the survey, um, one of the major reasons why a lot of those hurlers would have kept the WIT was because of their love for hurling and they felt that it would enhance their progress as an athlete in, in that particular sport. So I'm sure it's the same for all different athletes. Yeah. Uh, Marcus, sorry to keep you waiting. Um, just only yourself and Daryl left. Uh, just when looking back through your own CV, Marcus, like you, you're winning national champions, national championships the whole way up. Uh, I come from Nina, which is the, the home of Sean Norton and Nina Olympic, and would have heard all about you guys from a very young age. How, how did you manage to sustain that intensity, Marcus, while, while you were in college? And I know you did an, um, a Master's of Science in S&C as well, but you were offered scholarships in both Ireland and the US. What came into play when it came to you choosing to, to stay local, go to IT Carlo, and focus on your career domestically and internationally as well? Um, yeah, firstly, we had, we had great memories in Nina at Demian. It was brilliant to 
All they got cold. There as a youngster. Um, yeah, in the hay yeah. shed, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was brilliant. Um, I think the youngsters are spoiled nowadays in Athlone in Dublin, but uh, we started it with Nina and it was brilliant. But um, yeah, um, look, for me, it was all about uh, not making a, an absolute major, major change in my life. And uh, <clears throat> when she was in IT, Carlo, you know, I, I, I went in to speak um, to them and they offered me a scholarship, which was great. And um, at the time, a man was coaching me and it was... Yeah. Uh, everything was working and I was improving year on year and I didn't feel the need that um, we needed a major change but enough of a change that um, could help me kind of progress on and uh, even though we're an individual sport I think um, I often kind of refer to like that team element around me in a different kind of capacity and IT Carla were a major part of my team and um, they helped me to just completely develop as an athlete and uh, I suppose it a lot of people talk about facilities and um, Carlo IT absolutely had that, but what they had to match it was um, really good personnel with like a complete understanding and um, of anything that we needed to kind of progress to the next stage or, or what we needed to get better. Um, and that really helped. And Brian sort of alluded to it there. Uh, Michael Dempsey was uh, a big part of my team as well, and it was great to have him on board. So, um, yeah, so what we had in IT Carlo was facilities, uh, but also personnel with a with a big understanding of of what we needed and a structure in place. Um, so it was quite easy to sustain that intensity in my training and competition. And there was also a great kind of sporting culture within the college. And um, we were always kind of aware that, I suppose, how the soccer players were doing, how the hurlers were getting on, how the basketballers were doing. And that kind of every time we stuck on the IT Carlo singlet in varsities or even going out to the World University Games, that's who you're representing. And, and that's that's a big thing too. So um, yeah, I had a great time there and I'm still using them, uh, using IT Carlo as a, a training base to a point as well. And uh, they've been a really good help to me. And without them, like Phil said, I wouldn't have made an Olympic Games. So uh, yeah, I'm very grateful. Yeah. It's it's for you hear of the traveling that Brian did as well, Mark. It's like it's so handy just to be at home. Like, and I know uh, Shane trained you later on, but your man was coaching you for quite a while, and it just seemed like you had everything on site almost. That had well, to be fantastic. Yeah, and that's absolutely it. And uh, at the time, again, like you said, my training setup has since changed. I'm working with Shane McCormack now, but at the time, um, I was working at a Sport Ireland Institute, and I was traveling up there once or twice a week, but it was kind of a case, right, how do we minimise that travel and what do we have in IT Carol that, okay, I don't have to get in the car and drive up to Sport Ireland in Dublin. I can do it here because it's just as good. And um, I think that was really important. And um, yeah, it's like I said, the two major things were facilities top notch, but with a big, big personnel to match that. And uh, yeah. Okay, Marcus. Darrell, when, when you were making your way, um, in, 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 I suppose, in life as, as an underage player, um, were you tempted to ignore education and the third level aspect of that? Because uh, you had a, I suppose, a very busy Irish schedule at underage level and even with the universities and stuff like that. Was there ever any chance there that you may have ignored education and maybe gone further with soccer, looking for trials professionally, going to clubs across channel, that sort of stuff? Yeah, definitely. Um, I suppose when I was 16, I was uh, over in trial in England with three different clubs um, and Reading actually approached to sign me. But um, I suppose my parents as well, I was always very uh, education education focused and that. So um, we decided at the time it would probably be better off to do my leaving cert and uh, finish that out. <clears throat> and then... Uh, I got talking to the lads in WIT after, so I said that um, it would be better for me to, to kind of finish off my um, my college degree as well and, and get that education side of things out of the way. Um, I mean, I suppose, like, just even recently there in pre-season a couple of weeks ago, I uh, I picked up an injury, and initially they thought I was after breaking my ankle, and thankfully it wasn't that serious, but that just shows your spit second away from your career being finished, and... Similar to what some of the lads mentioned previously, I always felt like I needed something to fall back on once my soccer career ended. So um, I was always kind of 
I suppose had the, the thinking that I was always going to try and, and complete my uh, my degree anyway. Um, and then after that, if, if the opportunity was to go professionally at the soccer, at least I'd have that to fall back on then. You happy you did that there? Yeah, I'm definitely, definitely. Um, especially when you see the, the actual amount of, I think it's like a half a percent of uh, players in academies in England actually make it the first team level, which is crazy when you think about it. Yeah. Um, so like, I suppose for me, I was thinking as well, if I got into the League of Ireland club and I was playing adult game over here, like with men, when you get that transfer over, if you do, you're going into a first team environment. You don't have to come through that academy and, and, and so on. So that was another kind of, uh, say, advantage to, to staying at home. And, and then as well, like you're moving to England when you're 16, you know, you're living in a different country. You don't know anyone over there. It's, it's a lonely life as well. Um, whereas I stayed here, I'm still living at home. All my family are around me. You know, so it like similar again to what the lads are saying. Nothing really changed in my in my lifestyle, I suppose, as such. Um, so yeah, I was definitely definitely glad that I um I stayed at home and, and done the education side of it. Just from listening to you, Daryl, it seems you're way more rounded as well, and that if it comes around again for you, if you do go over, you have a, a really good perspective on things. Definitely, yeah, a hundred percent. Um, like you're more mature in yourself. Do you know, at sixteen, look, if when Reading came and, and came looking for me, like, obviously it's hard to turn it away and say no, but um, as I said, my parents had a, had a big influence on, on me and, and um, at the time I could, I could see why, which is a big thing as well. I think if I was more, um, if I probably wasn't as well as matured, I probably would have kind of went against their decision and said I'd go for it. But um, yeah, no, definitely you can mature a lot more at home and even just, you're getting, I suppose, a normal upbringing as well. Like as I, as I said, when you go to, to England at sixteen, it's hard because you're kind of in digs over there or whatever. Like I, I, I've had trials and I've seen it, what the the weekly schedule is like, and I just felt at the time it wasn't for me. So I'm definitely glad that that I, I yeah. stayed at home. That's very interesting, uh, Grace. Just to to go back to, to you, then it seems like a, a long time ago that we chatted, but uh, just in terms of like uh, the, the flexibility, then. Um, and maybe in terms of building a relationship, like you said that you're used to a busy lifestyle and the, the college facilitated um, your your duties and your work. Um, what are the key hallmarks then, Grace, like for both sport and academics? Is, is it consistency or is it reliability or, or is it work ethic? What would be the key characteristics, do you think, to make this work for both college and sport? I think it's an accumulation of things. I don't think that you can nearly pigeonhole it into one thing. I think it's okay. communication. I think it's um, understanding. It's, you know, it's it's about, like, I, I, I just was reflecting a lot there, thinking about college, and you're just thinking about, you know, the, the work that you have to do to make sure you're hitting your timeline, you know, with your assignments and all of that. It's been so long since I was there, you know, you nearly forget. And the pressure you're under and, you know, you just learn the, the importance of being on top of things and being organised. And, like, that just teaches you so much in life, you know, uh, in the workplace now, you know, being able to balance, you know, the workload and the stress and trying to balance, you know, that not affecting, say, your performance. And that never ends. You know, I think sometimes people think when the leaving starts over, it's all, you know, it's all erosy. It's, 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 that's life for you when you're in when you're in a job and uh, work is busy. You have to be able to learn to park yeah. that on a Wednesday evening and go to training and get the most out of your training session. So what I found like in college is that that's what that taught you as well, more than ever. Um, and that it's, it's an amazing, a special experience. You know, you're, when do you get an opportunity to play with other intercounty players and meet other people from different walks of life, um, all with similar interests? And, and it, it's just an amazing opportunity to be, to be part of that experience. That's, I was really just thinking about it. It's just an amazing experience in college. And it's something that you just don't get to do again. You know, you're always yeah. playing with people you're from. You know, it's, it's a logistical thing. Um, but this is like, you know, I've best friends for life there you know um them still in touch with and it's all because you've all the similar interests and support you know you're working recruitment out in grace so if you were going back yeah. now would you do anything different if you're going back no 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 i wouldn't no no regrets that's, that's great to be able to reason. say that isn't it yeah yeah absolutely no okay. absolutely um katie i'm just wondering then like uh you know you'll be in college for the next 25 years i'd say so <laughs> will they, and i don't blame you a lot of us here would, would like to be in that situation i certainly would anyway um 
just in terms of the online learning, then I went back two years ago and um, virtual learning was becoming a thing then before the pandemic hit. How important would that be in this day and age when you've got a million and one things going on, Katie? Uh, yeah, well, I definitely struggled with the online learning um, at the start because I was new to WIT this year, say. Um, so I obviously wasn't meeting any people. Um, so Komogi was great that way in that I was able to go down, say, two evenings a week and go training. And you're the same as Grace said, you're meeting girls from other counties. So yeah. Like I met the likes of the tip goalie or the clear corner back that I would have always hurled against, but like I never got to talk to these girls. And like you figure out that they actually are kind of sound when you go training <laughs> with them and get talking to them. Um so yeah, it was that was sport was great um in WIT from that side of things for me, um, for the online learning. And now I suppose everyone's just more used to the online learning and it's just logging on to Zoom is just seen as a normal thing now. Yeah. Yeah, and I understand. And going Komogi then allowed you to meet people. So it was the balance. You were you were behind a, a computer screen in one and and actually interacting with people then in the other. Um, yeah. Brian, just as regards, how, how important is it to get the right college, Brian? I know you had a, an almighty trek up and down that road, but Jesus, listen to you. It's, it's, it seems like you'd nearly go back to Carlo again if you were doing it all over again, that you, the balance was, well, the relationship was right. And how important is that? Yeah, I think it's key, to be honest, Damien. Um, I suppose, you know, I went outside my comfort zone first day. Uh, we we're just after losing, you know, the Ireland minor final, and yeah. uh, I suppose nearly everyone in the squad were going to Cork, like you know, CIT or UCC, and that option was there too. But I, I'd gone seen, I went up to Carlo, and I'd seen like you know the facilities, the setup, you know, the course itself, the sports next size one was unique at the time, um, and you know, I it kind of wasn't a holiday. I was going for really like you know what I mean. It was more or less. No, I suppose I was a bit, I had a bit of a grudge on myself after losing the All-Ireland final and kind of said, look, everything's on a plate for me, you know, let's just go and do it, like, you know. Um, it ticked every box, like, in terms of, you know, I was carrying kind of a, a vertebrae back injury at the time just after the All-Ireland and, you know, you had physiotherapy, you had the elite gym, you had, you know, <laughs> steam rooms and sauna and, and it, it just had everything for 2010, like, you know, I suppose, and, 12 years down the line, it's kind of normal now, but definitely IT car are well ahead in, in everything. Like, so, you know, I just, I said, look, the opportunity was there for me. Um, you know, if I wanted to, to make the stepping stone to senior level and, and 21 level, this is probably the, this is the college that would probably suit me best. And, you know, it was, it was different to the lads, you know, and I said, I knew if I, if I was going out of my way on my own, you know, that, you know, I'd work harder, um, you know, I, I suppose in the classroom and, which I wouldn't have been ever great at, like, and was on the pitch as well, like, you know, so thankfully it worked. I think, you know, I had a massive, you know, I suppose the three years we were in, in, um, I was in Carlow, we had a very successful under 21 uh, campaign. We won mm. the Masters, we lost an Ireland final, and probably should have had another All Ireland. So it definitely worked in some way or another. Um, and as I said, like, you know, you know, when things are going well, uh, um, you know, in, in college and you like it up and stuff, it's a lot easier to play a sport and enjoy it at the same time. I understand that, Brian. Um, Phil, you were talking the last time around about maybe taking one module each, each semester. And I suppose two questions I want to ask you, Phil. Um, did you ever, were you ever able to study when you were abroad competing? Was that ever an issue? And then certainly, and uh, secondly, there's a thing called the, the urgent matrix, which a lot of students might use. And it's basically down to time management where you prioritize the most immediate thing in your life at that moment in time. So just the, the two of those, did you study when you were traveling abroad? And secondly, did you prioritize stuff as you went along? Yeah, I definitely bit of both. And like, even when I started my master's in 2017, um, there was a lot of American students on my course. So they had started trialing the online um, experience that way. So um, we were definitely ahead of the curve um, before the pandemic. So it definitely gave me the opportunity to log on to the lectures wherever I was. And even last year, um, in the in the height of it, we were in Spain on a training camp and I was able to continue my lectures as is. Um, so that certainly was very, very helpful. Um, but yeah, I was constantly doing something on the go wherever I was um, throughout the years. Obviously, I would love to have everything just done out of the way um, before I go on camps or whatever, but that is that is the reality of it. You have to, to keep up with your studies and different things like that. But um, no, it certainly was very helpful that things have moved online and I think it opens it up as well to, um, 
to other students looking in because maybe when you are trying to balance sports and different things like that it's um it may be a reason where you, you don't continue your studies or further on your education because of the difficulty of traveling to college or the hours or whatever it may be. But no, um, I really found the online and even as it is now, um, it certainly was very helpful, even in terms of COVID, because obviously we had to keep our bubbles really, really tight. And knowing that I could continue my modules, it was online didn't have that COVID risk at the time but um, it was all it was all the small things but uh, yeah no I certainly played to my advantage of it being online. Yeah that was a game changer definitely Phil. Uh, Paula just in terms of then one of the points I was keen to address is building that good relationship with the college and you, you're lecturing in IT Carlo now and uh, you know I suppose at, at times you said how good they were to you but you had a, a good profile as well Paula. For, for our students coming on board you don't want any friction in your life between your educational institution and your sports coaches and stuff like that. So how essential is it to have a smooth road between you, the college and your sports management team? Yeah, I think it is essential. And even, you know, like you say, you don't want friction, but also you want like when people are at their happiest, that's when they'll perform best. So if there is minimal kind of uh, conflict, you know, between what people are trying to do, then you know they're more likely to be able to focus on their athletics. Um, so I think facilitating it, facilitating athletes to be able to, you know, whether they need some leeway in terms of their studies if they are traveling abroad or things like that. I think IT Carlo have always been very good about that. And as you were saying, to me as a as a staff member, I was obviously still playing rugby. I had I had actually been just come from I'd lived for a year in France. I was playing semi-pro rugby over in Toulouse um, before I had started working in IT Carlo. So the kind of there was a big decision there because I was still playing with Ireland. I was still traveling a good bit to Dublin um, in terms of where, where I would go. So um, yeah, that they were really good. It was a really good option for me to be close to Dublin, to have great facilities, like the lads have said, yeah. um, and be able to get it, everything done, you know, and have that great relationship. In, in particular, say my head of department would have been really good about, you know, facilitating any kind of travel or or time off and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's gas, Paula. That word facilities comes up time and time again, doesn't it? It really is key to this this debate here. Column, just as regards to yourself, uh, as, as an administrator, Colm, did you ever come across students maybe struggling either with workload or financially as well? Because if you are going to give four or five years in college and, you know, you try and get scholarships and you try and get grants, but this is not a cheap country to live in anymore. So um, was it ever, but would you ever come across anything like that column in terms of the financial hardship or maybe the stress workload? Let's see, uh, students coming from different backgrounds and um, you're always there to try and support the students. You can't uh, dig in too far into their, their personal yeah. lives, but uh, yeah, as you get to know the team managers and the, and the people that are over the teams, we do ask them to keep an eye on the students and to try and figure out um, there is different different funds available for students while they're in college. And obviously most of the, the top sports people will be on a scholarship and that does help uh, some way in terms of uh, uh, with the expenses that they'd incur. And there's also funds like the Student Assistance Fund and there's, there's other ways that students can be helped while they're in college. And it's just about uh, who's ever over those teams, making sure that they know the, the supports that are available to the students. So whether they're struggling, you know, mentally or financially or academically, that there is support put in place for those students to continue on their journey. So that, as I said, by their four or five years when they finish whatever college that they, that, you know, that they would have had got a good experience. Okay, Colin. Um, just Marcus, just to come to you for a sec. Um, on the motivation side of things, Marcus, is it, is it how hard is it for an elite sports person to keep up the studies and continuously keep motivated to get to the level that all you guys either were at, are at, or will be at very, very soon? Um, yeah, like, um, I suppose there's a motivation for me. I, I was always very motivated in terms of my sport anyway, and definitely academically as well. I think uh, during my time in IT Carlo, it, it sort of goes hand in hand. Um, I suppose the same little trade supply that, uh, you know, if you want to do uh, really well in, in the, on the track and if you want to do really well in your tests or exams or assignments, um, it's all the usual things, you know, your application, your effort, your hard work, your discipline. 
Um, they all go hand in hand on both sides. Um, and motivation was it was probably never a, an issue for me, but um, I was always eager to to kind of try to try at least do my best in both, you know. Um, and I think that was really important that I gave an honest effort um, on both accounts. And you learn from, I suppose, the sports side of things or the academic. You can carry them through either way. Like for example, if a test didn't go so well, um, how do you deal with it? How do you move on? How do you get better for the next one you know or an assignment and the same thing on the track if a race doesn't go that well you know what are we going to do to make this better um and how how are we going to going to improve it for the next time and um yeah i suppose it was just uh alluded to a couple of times there i think i've said this before but um what was what's really important as well for us was uh in order to have kind of those good performances on the track uh we really needed to be a happy person off the track and um, definitely my time in IT Carlo, you know, it was it was a, a very good environment uh, to be in. And um, I was definitely very happy there in my studies. And I think that uh, that really helped in terms of um, my performances on the track. So. OK, Marcus, um, darling, going to leave the very, very last word to you. Uh, just in terms of sport is, is a great reliever of stress, like uh, even find yourself like three young kids here and you need a bit of peace and quiet every so often and to go off to a training pitch and turn the phone off is great how important is sport for a third level student and is it more important now than ever do you think just some form of activity it doesn't have to be elite yeah without a doubt i like personally i think it's vital um for your mental health like as i mentioned there <clears throat> a couple of weeks ago i picked up an injury and i yeah. kind of wasn't in and around the team as much probably the last few weeks, you know, I was rehabbing, rehabbing in the gym on my own. And even just the, um, you know, not having the social aspect of it with the team was very tough on the mental side of things. I actually almost found that um, tougher than the actual rehabbing of the injury itself. But I've, I've, I'm back training now, thankfully. And, you know, I, I can see myself even day to day, a more happier person going around um, just in general, in general terms. Like, so, it definitely definitely plays a vital part in um in in third level and I suppose like exams coming up you know that'll play a big part I I know like you'd be studying for the exams or whatever but I always like to to take a bit of time out to do um to do my own training or if it's with the team because I think it's it's great to leave off a bit of steam as well like uh, you know you have to really especially when you're you're training at such a high level and and so much as as all of us are we can't just cut that either so um yeah it's vital for us. Okay, there, that's brilliant. Guys, does that, before we, or 40 minutes are up there, thereabouts, does anybody want to contribute anything else before I, I try and offer up a summary of, of, of what you've spoken about? Anybody want to chip in with anything before we go? Happy enough to try and let me summarise it. Um, I think some key stuff came up. It was a fascinating chat just for the last half an hour or so. Choosing the right college is, is a thing. Building a good relationship with the college is massive. Having flexibility with your studies. Managing your time effectively managing your study when you're traveling, being organized, being reliable, being professional, availing of online education, and not being afraid to promote the college as well. It works both ways. That sense of teamwork and understanding that you're all part of a family, and of course, the help from your own family. And as Daryl was saying then, for your own mental health purposes, sport can be a, a great reliever of stress. Um, Grace has mentioned the fact that she was used to a busy lifestyle but everybody in, in IT, Carlo, facilitated her lifestyle. Um, it facilitated her ACL recovery as well. Uh, Grace was mentioning the fact that college was probably the first real example of inclusivity in sport as well. Uh, but the words communication, balance and understanding, they're very important for students who want to combine elite sport and academic purposes as well. Uh, Katie just mentioned the fact that she got a, a good expertise in the gym and which will help her in with her ongoing sports studies and, and the courses, uh, WIT gave her any help whatsoever that they could. Uh, learning to be more organized, Katie, as well, is something that you mentioned in, in that college as well. And while you might have struggled with the online learning, uh, camogie and playing sport give you the chance to meet people as well and interact, and that gave you a lovely balance. Uh, Brian, I suppose people will find it very hard to ever look past the four and a half hours uh, up and down the road. You know, and that could have defined your time in, in IT, Carlo, but listening to you, it certainly didn't. Um, you know, the people you trusted there, the relationship you built up with the college, everybody from Mick Dempsey, maybe 
not being afraid to, to back yourself and go your own road as well when it would have been quite easy to go to CIT or UCC. So d- definitely backing yourself to, to, to kind of plow your own territory. That's a, that's a major thing too. Um, Phil, you just kind of, I suppose, Phil, with, with all that you're still achieving and all you're still trying to you know, accommodate in terms of education, it's really fascinating to see and your ability to compartmentalize um, and I suppose is really second to none and even taking your module each semester, but uh, having training camp in Spain and simulated avail of lectures as well. I think work ethic springs to mind there the whole time and organization. And, and of course you, you have an ability to deal with both. Uh, so it's fascinating as well. Uh, Paula, you were mentioning the fact that you didn't want to leave third level education, uh, that once it's a smooth road, you can be in your happiest place nearly in life. Um, you were mentioning the fact too that you know the colleges can give you great leeway and that's really important to help you with your both with your work as, a, as an academic staff member or as a student as well. Um, Colm, I suppose you, you were chatting about maybe the need to keep improving yourself and that that was continuous. Uh, you reckon too that the transition uh, to third level would have been made easier through playing sport. Uh, you also mentioned the fact too that out of the 35 players you, you surveyed for your master's, 34 of them got to finish their degree. So it probably backs up everything you've just said that one, uh, one lends itself to another. Um, and to put your head down, but know that you're, you're not on your own in college is a massive thing as well. Uh, Marcus, it, it's clear to, to everybody here that I suppose you made it work for yourself. You, you trained locally, you had a, your mom before Shane was training you. That, that was very, very easy for you, but still the work had to be done. Um, not making any major changes was a good thing in your life. Uh, how to learn to get better both on the track and in the exam hall and maybe take each experience and learn from that. But you, you mentioned too, Marcus, more than anything, the facilities and the people. Facilities are, are, are all very, very well and everybody needs them, but you also need people are on site to help you. You mentioned Mick Dempsey and other people as well, but um, I suppose the fact then that you as an elite sport person are all as motivated like your colleagues on the call here that gives you a fighting battle daryl your story was fascinating as well you could easily have gone a different route you didn't have to go down the education route you could have signed with reading and maybe taken your chance and and seen what, what came there too uh, but when you give us that statistic daryl about the half percent of academy footballers making it into the first team that's frightening really and you, you clearly took the right path in life as well uh, you mentioned your ankle injury and how your your career could have been over in split second and maybe the mental health anguish that could have caused you as well. But you're certainly from listening to it earlier, you're way more rounded with your experience of going through getting your degree and building up your career slowly at an adult level. And hopefully um, there'll be a massive future there for you as well. Um, and I think you all mentioned the fact to try and keep life as normal and as rounded as possible. Uh, and it comes down to application, effort, hard work and discipline. And um that's kind of the, the, the notes I've got from the, the last 40 minutes. So it, did I miss anything obvious? I hope I didn't anyway. I hope I didn't. So uh, all that remains for me, guys, is to thank uh, both Alan and Katie um, from the two colleges, from WIT and IT Carlo, uh, to wish everybody in the, the Southeast Technological University every best look uh, with the project going forward. Hopefully this learning festival will go well. And to Grace, Brian, Paula and Marcus, and to Katie Nolan, to Phil, to Colm and Daryl, uh, just like thank you all for your time, folks. And hopefully everybody watching or listening in will have got something uh, out of interest to glean from this. So thanks very much to you all for your time.